What's up, hockey fans, and welcome back to Marty's Illegal Stick. You know, we've been on the, the shelf here for a couple of weeks. That's my fault. Uh, I uh, just kind of been uh, laid up here with a back injury, and but you know what? We are back in action. We're brought to you by the Sports History Network. I'm your host, Scott Kinville, and we got a lot to catch up on, guys, so I'm going to bring you guys right in. We're going to get going here. Uh, to the bottom of the screen there, he is uh, Ranger fan number one, but it looks like he's repping the Toronto Maple Leafs with his shirt. He is Mr. <laughs> Chris Pizzotti. What's going on? Hey, Scott. I heard uh, I, I heard Jamie Ben got suspended for cross-checking you in the back, so that's good. Yes, well, it was it was residual. Uh, Scott, <laughs> Scott so yeah. it was Tiger that cross check was so hard that I felt it, and that's what happened. It was it was a, it was an awkward landing spot. I heard. Yeah, that's well, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, at my age, I know all about awkward landing spots. That's why I've been laid up for a couple of weeks. Right? So he had to use he had to use Mark Stone's face to help him pick himself back up. You know, I tell you, I, I, I have to say, I got something in common with Mark Stone now. I know how he felt with all those back injuries and all that. I'm sitting here on a bag of ice doing this show, so. This is just great, you know. But uh, above us, right there to the right, we've got the international bender of mystery. He is Mr. Ed Stefaniak. Ed, what is going on? Oh, nothing much. Uh, just getting nice time um, working out a lot. Um, big news. Uh, as far as uh, people who've listened to this podcast in the past, um, I play for Team Chile. Um, small international team. We play uh, in the Amerigo Ladam Cup, really working towards like getting some recognition. Uh, Puerto Rico has in the past. Um, other countries that have played in this tournament have. Um, and recently named assistant captain. Um, awesome. Hard work I've done off the ice, and uh, it was kind of the contributing factor to that. Um, we have other, you know, I, I, something I wasn't asked or something I didn't ask to have. I just, I just was like, I got to do this. Got to rally the team. Um, but other than that, we uh, have GoFundMe's um, currently active. One GoFundMe. Um, Scott, where are you going to post the link of it to the? Uh... This is going to be on our Facebook page and our Twitter page. Okay, so yeah, and, I'll. Uh, I, I sent you everything I need. Yep, and yep. we'll have that right up there because that's dude, that's awesome. That that really is. Yeah. And, um, and you know, it's, it just it just shows it goes to show just the, the growth of the sport and it, anything that you know that, that helps us along is is well worth it. Absolutely, um, this GoFundMe it's it's advertised as you know helping us get our jerseys and stuff like that. But we have a lot of children down in Chile who want to learn hockey. There's awesome. very limited ice down there, especially in the you know. Uh, especially like in the summer months, they have one one arena in Santiago open, and it's about as big as my living room. Um, <laughs> I know it's tiny, um, but ice is ice, and uh, we need to get those kids' equipment. Um, I'm doing what I can and picking up things and mailing them down, picking up things. I'm going to give them to uh, you know, the lady who puts all this together, um, and tell her to bring it down with her. I think I've sent down 10 or 11 pairs of gloves, you know, four or five helmets. They're, none of them are brand new. I'm not buying them brand new no, stuff, no. but I'd like them to have the opportunity to get brand new stuff. Um, our goal is set at 5,000 currently, and if I can blow that one out of the water, that'd be huge. Um, it really is, like, something I want to do for the, the, the citizens of Chile and growing the game. You know, we have... You know, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Venezuela, all represented in this tournament. Um, and that's just in South America. We have Puerto Rico and uh, Mexico, Armenia now, and also Israel and Egypt and a bunch of Middle Eastern countries also represented in this tournament. And uh, I, I, seeing the game grow to that length is why we all do it. It's... You know, we all love the sport. And we all want to win. Um, being able to watch the the, the the U16 teams play and the um, U12 teams play and all that, that's, that's amazing. You know, being able to meet people of different cultures who don't get the opportunity to play hockey normally, represent their country, and have the opportunity to be in an I, IAHF qualifier is is. It's the world, like see, oh, being able to being able to see that, um, 
And later on in the summer, once uh, once it's getting closer, I'll tell everyone how to watch it and and support. You know, support from home. If everyone wants to go out to Miami, though, it's a party. Hey, it, right? It's there a party. Go. And I'm I'm having a hard time picturing you on South Beach, but you know what? That's uh... a <laughs> this. It's it might be a, it might it's, be a huge party. That's right. <laughs> It's a hey. I got a personal. I'm doing all the off ice stuff right now. Diet, um, personal trainer. Um, I'm working really hard right now, and I'm as sore as I've ever been. So, I'm I'm ready to go and get this win. Might Absolutely. be partying with uh, the NBA championship team and and the uh, Stanley Cup winner yeah. down in Miami. So it's funny story. Last year when um, Colorado won the cup. So the two years prior, when um, when Tampa won the cup, they brought the Stanley Cup to the tournament. Last year, they the, the cup was in Colorado, so they brought the Norris, the Vesna, the Jack Adams, and all the individual trophies. And I we got pictures with all of them. So I got to touch the Norris trophy, which all my heroes have gotten to touch. So that's cool. But I'm now pulling for the Panthers, so I could, <laughs> so me and my dad could go touch the cup for once. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? I'll tell you what, Ed, what you're doing is, like I said, absolutely fantastic. And we're going to do everything we can to help you get the word out because this is just a fantastic thing. But I'll tell you something. You just mentioned the Panthers. And we've got a lot of NHL playoff hockey to catch up on, boys. Because, uh, because again, my fault. Been laid up a little bit here. But let's get right into those NHL playoffs. And I'm going to actually flip this over. And I want to start in the Western Conference because the Western Conference final is actually still going on. Thanks to the Dallas Stars winning in overtime last night to stave off elimination, uh, the Golden Knights jumped out to a three-game-to-none lead, which actually is quite surprising given how evenly matched up the teams were. What are you guys' thoughts on this series so far? Well, uh, I think it's been a surprise myself uh, at how – I don't really know if it's how dominant Vegas has been or how, like, lackluster – Dallas has been, you know, uh, Mark Messier has said it several times on the broadcast that like, he really thinks that Kraken series took a lot out of Dallas. They played so hard to beat the Kraken and good on the Kraken, man. They gave it everything. Um, I really thought they were going to do it. Um, But, uh, you know, Dallas has been a rebound team. You know, they, they rebound well after losses and, they managed to pull it out, um, but I feel like they ran out of steam. Like when they came into this Vegas team who was rested, you know, they got an extra few days of rest between the rounds. Plus, they gave them a, a couple of days. The league did before the round started, so Vegas was pretty well rested and ready to go. And I know, you know, Scott. Sometimes you're like, that's a detriment, you know, because your legs aren't all there and whatnot, but. Vegas did not look, you know, slow at all to to start this series, and right. you know they've they've come out to a strong lead, um, and 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 again, I don't think they've looked like particularly great. The guys, you know, who who you expect to perform, like Marsh, So and Eichel, you know, they're they're doing well, but like it really kills me when I see Brett Howden scoring overtime. <laughs> <laughs> I just I hate Brett Howden with the passion of a thousand sons. Come on, former New really York Rangers fan favorite Brett Howden, you hate him? He was such garbage for the Rangers. <laughs> I mean, I think he was there three years. I think he scored five goals in three years, maybe. <laughs> uh, took bad penalties. Could not be relied on. And, and in the bubble, he was awful. He was right. awful in the bubble. Like, I think every time he was on the ice, they scored on us. Like, uh, Carolina scored. Like, it, it, I can't stand it. Actually, that's the thing I really hate about these playoffs right now is how many former Rangers are on teams. Oh, and, it, it, you know, Jesper fast, with, you know, winning games, five goals in the playoffs. Like, I think, oh, geez, you didn't want to give him five hundred grand to keep him. Like, I know. You know, like it's so, 
It's so crazy, but Brady Shea contributing to Carolina, even though they just got eliminated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but the Vegas good on them. They've they've done well. Uh, I think the real story for Vegas is their goalie Hill. You yeah, know, that's... Hill Hill has been great. Um, he really has. Even last night, I mean, that Pavelski overtime winner. Now our goalies can be stop, expected to stop that. No, like it's a cross no. cross ice one time to the opposite post. Like that's that's. Right. <laughs> I mean, if Hill was the worst goalie, he probably would have stopped it because he wouldn't have gotten across, yeah. and the puck would have hit him. <laughs> like so, yeah. uh, you know, might be an instance where being a good goaltender does not pay off because. Uh, there's no way to stop that if you're a good goalie because you're gonna move across, and uh, and I, I like uh, I forget who they were interviewing after the game. They asked them like, "How is this?" And they said, "Oh, I love these overtime games in the playoffs. They're much better when you win." Right. <laughs> and right. uh, and we've seen a lot of these overtime games, uh, and it's really crazy, you know, how different. I really feel like the players are not prepared for overtime in the playoffs because of the way it works in the regular season. And I still wish that there was some way to extend overtime in the regular season, even if they went to 10 minutes instead of right. five, you really know, or something. Yeah. Let, let them, let their legs burn a little more yeah. in overtime before you go to a shootout, you yes, know, absolutely. um, but it's it's been good hockey. This Vegas uh, Dallas series has definitely been, as far as I can say, maybe of the last round and this round. I think it's the best series to watch. Yeah, I think it's important to point out that Vegas is actually finally for the first time all season healthy, and it's yeah. really starting. It showed in that Edmonton series more than anything else. And what Vegas did that LA didn't do against Edmonton was they were extremely aggressive with the Oilers. They were extremely aggressive on the penalty kill. They were ex ex very aggressive on five on five. And that means everything. And if, if you're a Vegas team that's healthy, they can do that. They can pull that off. But the interesting, mm -hmm. interesting thing about this Vegas Dallas series is three of these games have gone to overtime. So this could very easily be a two to two series right now. But I will agree with you, Mazzotti, in the fact that I tell you, there's games in this series, especially Dallas, just kind of looked like they were totally checked out. But like game three, it's yeah. Like wow, you guys have a game. You you realize that you're you're down two games to none, right? And they just kind of looked like they didn't even care. But I mean, good on them coming back last night. Ed, what are your thoughts on this series? It's it, this this series and like like other series, it's been closer than what the series score shows. You know, like you said, it very well could be a two-two series. It's just bounces and puck luck. Um, Dallas and Mazzotti, you took the words out of my mouth. With Dallas, definitely had every ounce of energy taken to beat Seattle. Um, it's it, they they don't they, they look more gassed than than Vegas, and it's that time old tale of rest versus rust. And in this this individual scenario, rest is winning. Um, I really have no more to contribute on this series. I've with the uh, Western Conference Finals. It's been it's been tough because it's on while I'm at work. So, yeah, yeah, right. Um, well, then I'll tell you what. Then that's the perfect way to flip over to the Eastern Conference. <laughs> God, you you made my job easy there. Thanks, so I appreciate it. I do and, what I can. It's, it's all about the team. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And because of that, and since this Eastern Conference Final is over as the Florida Panthers swept the Carolina Hurricanes four games to none, uh, as much of a heater as the Panthers have been on, I'm actually shocked that this was a four games to none sweep, uh, given just how good of a team Carolina is. But, Ed, tell us, what do you think about this series? It's a team of destiny. I, I I have no no other way to say it, but the Florida Panthers are channeling their 2019 Blues and their team of destiny. Um, they are a very uh, it it was a mind numbing series to watch. You know, I I get to work, I put the game in my ear, and I that first that first game that was at what four overtimes with 12 seconds left. Right. It, it, insanity. Um, 
what was that the fifth <laughs> longest game of all time like i'm halfway i'm halfway through my shift and it's already like it's it's still going i'm i, I think you know the game should have been done a game and a half ago <laughs> <laughs> um it was carolina tried carolina gave it their all um florida is just nastier they're built for the playoffs they they're getting depth scoring ryan lomberg has contributed like depth play pieces have contributed and that's something carolina did not do yeah absolutely florida I, I was totally firing agree. on all four lines florida was 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 better in their own end on all four lines and they just were a much better equipped team than their record shows and that Carolina can handle. It's well, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. There. Oh, you're fine. But, but yeah, it's oh, go ahead, Scott. Oh no, it's a, so <laughs> what I was gonna say, you know, you said the 2019 blues. I think the Panthers actually remind me more of the 12 LA Kings in the regards yeah. that they came from completely out of nowhere. Out yeah. of nowhere and got have gotten solid, solid goaltending. And that's really the key here for the Florida Panthers is that Sergei Bobrovsky is suddenly worth every bit of that contract. <laughs> after everybody dumped on him and the team for, what, two, three seasons after he had signed it, uh, all of a sudden that contract looks really, really darn good. And honestly, Mazzotti, I'm going to tell you something. I mean, the path that they have taken is extremely impressive. They knocked out the Bruins, which we said was possible, right? They took out Toronto. Uh, I'm looking at it here. They also, I mean, they they – the path has been great, but is this really a surprise? Because they won the President's Trophy last year. It's not the same team as last year. Okay. And it's also not the 2019 Blues because they weren't in last place January 2nd, which is just still so ridiculous to me that the team that was that bad won the Cup. I really don't understand. I'll never wrap my head around that one. Never. I'll never forget um, either. Don't worry. It, it's, but, it haunts my dreams. Everything haunts my dreams. I'm but <laughs> I'll say this for you, Ed. You got the you got the winner in the in the losers bracket of that first uh, round because I always said like you whoever your team loses to, you want them to do well to prove that your team lost to a good team. Boston is getting proven that they lost to a very good team. The Rangers did not. <laughs> you know, Jersey didn't do good against Carolina at all, you know. And now, you know, uh, the Jersey fans are also being disappointed because Carolina got swept by the next team. <laughs> so it's like it's like a double down bad. <laughs> you know, uh, Edmonton for, for Scott there, you know, they put up a fight against Vegas, but, you know, Vegas – they, uh, the only the only thing that Vegas had to do to beat Edmonton was stay out of the box. That's right. all they had to do. Right. <laughs> you know, when they managed to do that, they won the game. When they didn't, they lost the game. Like it was that cut and dry. But um, but this Florida team, I've been saying it. Like they got a lot of talent. I hate the Stahl brothers. I really, I, you know, I wish they could find the end of Jamie Ben's cross check. Um, I can't stand really either feel. of them. What's that? He said, tell us how you really feel. Yeah, I can't stand either of, of the Stahl brothers, any of them, really. There, there was no winner for me in that conference final because I, I hate Jordan Stahl just as much as I can't stand Eric Stahl. And I, I, Mark Stahl is super aggravating to me. I went back to look to his draft class, and I looked at the guys we could have drafted instead of Mark Stahl, and it made me sick to my stomach. Like, uh, do you know Chris Letang was in that draft and didn't get picked till 60 something? Like, yeah. Would the Rangers really have Chris Letang or Mark Stahl? Let me think about that one for a minute. And then, uh, you know, um, and he's, he's playing so much better now. He's still not great. I mean, he's obviously at the end of his, his shelf life, but he's playing like, I'd say like four years younger than when he left the Rangers. So let's, what did he leave the Rangers? 2018, I think it was. Something like that, yeah. It was, if it was 2018 or 2019, 
I remember the. I think he was in the bubble, maybe, because I remember like the last goal scored was completely his fault for a guy he wasn't anywhere near, or he was just trying to stick check a guy you should have cross checked, like, and and you still see some of those mistakes. He's he's not having a a, a great playoffs, but he's. He's fighting so hard, like I haven't seen him fight since 2014. Right. You know, um, and you know, good on him for doing that, but very aggravating as a Rangers. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, um, Montour is really the 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 guy keeping that Florida team together. Um, whenever I see Florida between Montour and Kachuk, um, they really they're. They got a solid forward and a solid D man that are going to give 110% every single shift. Not every game, every shift. Those guys do not quit on a play ever. Uh, and it's daunting. You can see it's daunting. And we really, I don't know how good Florida was against Carolina as much as how much we saw how flawed Carolina was. Without those guys they were counting on. When the guys got hurt in the last game, Slavin with that hit. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. What are we talking about that hit? They're calling it a Scott Stevens hit, you know? And I'm just like, you know, there were other guys that hit in the NHL other than Scott Stevens. You could easily call it a Cam Neely hit. Right. Like, right. like yeah. you know, like, why isn't Scott Stevens who owns the hit? You well, can call it a Dino Cicerelli hit. You can call it whatever you want. That was what? a legal hit that Slavin took. Completely that was legal. legal hit. Completely you know, I, I saw, legal. The reason hit. I say that is I saw there was some, you know, on of course on Twitter, right? Oh my god, what a filthy hit. He got it's like, well, no, okay, pick your hat up, idiot. Hit, it, was, it was completely legal. Yeah, yeah. It was completely legal and he, he picks his head up late. He tr- he tries to, to move, he can't. Yeah. By the time he picked his head up in I'm sorry, like this is NHL, and you're not a rookie, and yeah. you're coming out from behind the net. You should know you got to have your head up. Yep. Like, you shouldn't even be trying to skate that puck out of there. You should be sending that around the wall. Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy he thought he could just skate out of there, you know? So, sorry if you got concussed. Bad on Freddie Anderson for yeah. not keeping him on the ice and letting him back. get up. Yeah. You know, like, goalie's got to be out there and be like, stay down. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, you're you're helping him get up. What are you doing? The guy's gonna get hurt worse than he already is. Like, yeah. and you know, it was no surprise to me when they're like, Jacob Slavin will not return. No, no doubt. Kidding. Like, yeah, yeah right. like <laughs> really? <laughs> like, uh, how are you gonna give me a department of player safety if that guy's allowed back on the ice? Yeah, you know, right. saw him fall down three times off the ice. Like, what are you talking about? Like, he's not gonna return. So that is pretty ridiculous, but you know when Carolina's counting on those guys that aren't there to score goals, right? And basically, that's what makes up for their flawed goaltending. When you don't have those guys, the flawed goaltending stands out, and you lose the game. And granted, Freddie Anderson probably played the best he's ever played, at least in like four years, mm-hmm. like yeah. and. Uh, and it's not enough. It's not enough. Mm. Uh, I, I, you know, they played at Ranta a game or two there. You know, he, 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 he wasn't up to the task. And I like Ranta. I think he's a good goaltender. I think if he was starting goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers, they might be past Vegas. But, you know, uh, it's a daunting task when you don't got guys to score. Well, Jesper Fast is your leading scorer in the playoffs, no matter how good he did. You got a problem on your team. <laughs> like you can't have him and be the leading scorer for a series and and think things are going well. <laughs> like well, our, our third line winger is the best guy on the team right now. That's not it's not great. Guys, I think this was the series where Carolina finally really <laughs> truly missed Andrei Svechikov. Oh yeah. This was the series Absolutely. right here. Oh yeah. Absolutely. There is no doubt about it because Florida has that X factor. I mean, he's not even X factor; he's a superstar. And Matt Chuck, who has just basically owned these playoffs, really. Between him and Bobrovsky, they're the two that have carried Florida to this point. And but Carolina simply could not answer that because, again, without Shvetchnikov, all of a sudden that legit goal scoring threat that they needed 
gone. Nowhere to be found. Yeah. Because you're right, Mazzotti. You can't have Jasper Foss being your leading scorer. It's just not going to yeah. work. The other thing, too, is bavrovsky has been good. He hasn't been that great. Like, you watch him. If you watch him, he's off his mark a bunch of times. But Florida's playing so well in front of him, it hasn't burned him. Like, there's been several times where he's sliding out of that crease like we know he's prone to do because he, he's good at getting east-west, but he's not good at stopping so much. And sometimes he's, like, moving one way and the puck's going the other. But the Florida, you know, forecheck has been so well that it hasn't really burned him much. Um, and when he's been counted on, he's been stellar. That was, uh, I was just going to say that. When they really so, needed him, that's when yes. he was. Yes, absolutely, no doubt. And you know, I was looking over his hockey DB. Even in his worst years, he's not, you know, terrible. I mean, his I think his worst year he was a three oh three GA, and that was it. Like all the other years are two point oh, two point three, oh, two point six. Like so and, and you know, he played on some pretty bad teams in Columbus. And he so, went to yeah, and he won a couple of vessels, right? So, <laughs> you know, and, and and right now he's looking like one of those Vesna years. Right now, obviously he's not up for the Vesna, but no, you know, he's up for the Conn Smythe. Oh yeah, absolutely, he'd be up for that. Although I don't think he would win it next to Kachuk. Um, yeah. I think I think Florida. I think honestly, whether Florida wins the Cup final or not. Kachuk could definitely be in the Conn Smythe conversation because we know it does not have to come from the winning team. Right. Um, you know, it's funny you bring that up because I was just going to say that. Let's assume that Vegas finishes Dallas off, which, I mean, obviously the odds are in very good favor of that. I, I honestly don't think I don't it's see, a foregone I, conclusion. Yeah. Well, I it, think Dallas can come back in this. I really do. Okay. I mean, it'd be cool. It'd be really cool. Yeah. But I'm just yeah. saying that. Say it does happen, because I don't really see anybody on the Vegas team, maybe outside of Aiden Hill, that can be really considered a slam dunk candidate for the, the con Smythe, because Vegas has done it in a very much so team-like approach, which is great. Look at where it's getting. getting I'll them. tell you, if it's Brett it's, Howling, I'll kill myself. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, don't do that. <laughs> well, let's just say it comes down to Vegas and Florida, and Vegas wins that series. Now, depending on how bad it is, I mean, if it, say it goes six games, I think that you could actually make a very strong case for either Tuchuk or Bobrovsky from Florida to win that con spine. That's what I think. I agree. Um, I, I don't think it would be hell. I, I don't care how good he that's plays. What I'm saying. Think about it. Who from Vegas really has stood out enough to say, oh, he's the slam dunk winner. There's no – they wouldn't I, be here it, without him. Well, we have the series to play yet, so we will right. see. But see like, that. and it doesn't necessarily go by that because you know, I believe the one yeah. year like, Gensel came into the league, yeah. Gensel got like seven goals in the Stanley Cup final, and they gave right. the Consumites to Crosby, which was the biggest bunch of baloney ever. Oh, they had so, come on. So I could see them like I could see like you know, Bill Carlson scoring a little bit, or maybe. Uh, Standard maybe team. maybe Standard March or so, and they give it to Eichel or something like that. You know, like I could see them doing something stupid like that, but it, it would probably be one of those guys. I, if it's Vegas, I think it would probably be March or so. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, it's a long way off, yeah, obviously. Right. And uh, and Dallas know. has something to say about that still. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, absolutely. And, and you know. This whole like, oh, they're down three nothing, it's over. No, don't ever nah. think that. Nah, don't nah, ever nah, think nah, that. Yeah. I think the Philadelphia Flyers from a few years ago would have something you to tell you about to that. LA Kings would have um, something to say about that. Yeah, well, yeah LA Kings, Kings did it against what San Jose? San Jose in 14, yeah, man. yeah. I believe uh, Greg Wyshynski got a pie in the face for that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> by uh, the lion there. What's the lion's name? Oh, Bailey. Uh, Bailey, yeah, yeah, Bailey gave uh, Greg Wyshynski, uh I believe he had to take four pies to the face, yeah. one for each win. And you know what? <laughs> I still didn't shut him up either. <laughs> no, no. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not a foregone conclusion. This is hockey, 
and and I think a, a lot of guys will tell you in hockey, not that much carries over game to game, momentum wise. Sure. You know what I mean? Once you once well, you're in that right, game, man. the pressure changes. Not the pressure's all on Ve- on Vegas now to finish this off, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I mean, at this Dallas point, it's three game. to one. They win game five. We got a whole new series. Dallas is like, hey, we take it. We're taking it one game at a time. It's on Vegas to finish off Dallas. All Dallas is to stay alive. Dale, right. Dallas stays alive one more game. All of a sudden, the pressure on Vegas becomes immense, and it would be a home game back in Dallas. Like so, and and Dallas is one of the few teams that I think you know the home ice makes a big difference for them. Right. Um, and, and definitely it makes a difference for Vegas. So really, I think that next game is going to show us, you know, everything we need to. I think if Dallas wins the next game, it's going to seven. Yeah, uh, be very interesting. That's for so, sure. and we know anything can happen in a game seven. You know, then we're talking about Jake Onger is the yeah. consummate option. You know, uh, or or Heishkinen or Pavelski. Yeah. Oh, Pavelski's been a am- wouldn't yeah. that be awesome? Yeah, would I would be. love that. Yeah, would uh, Smith, Pavelski. Yeah, that would be one of the good guys w- in the sport. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah, no doubt. But uh, but yeah, I think uh, it's gonna be interesting um to see what Florida can do now because now they hit, like you said now they're they're you know they're they're another team that's pr- they're pretty healthy and yeah. they're. They're gonna I'll have some you, rest, I'll you know, you and no this could be it disaster. might be bad for Bobrovsky. That's exactly. my thinking. Exactly, it could be a disaster. It might be Florida. bad for Bobrovsky. He's definitely a goalie that needs to stay in rhythm, to stay on time. Yes. He needs to see a lot of shots, and when he's not getting that for days on end, I feel like game one could end up being a bad blowout against the Florida Panthers, I no matter know. who they play. I totally agree because of, you're yeah. absolutely right. If this Dallas Vegas series gets extended, all of a sudden all that momentum starts going away for Florida because you, I don't care if you you're right. If you're off for say more than two or three days, forget it. It's like you're starting right back from square one. But it's funny, you, know, you, you mentioned Vegas. Now, could you imagine how many heads will explode all over the city of Edmonton? If Jack Eichel gets a Stanley Cup before Connor McDavid, I that, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> and, and Buffalo, and Buffalo. Oh, you well, about that. yeah, yeah. But you know what, though, I honestly, though, I think it would be more devastating for Edmonton, and I'll tell you why. Because I think Buffalo made out really good in that trade. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. You know, so I think you know, very things, good things, you know, are in I, the cards I, for the Buffalo Sabers exactly. in the coming years. I so I'm a, not feeling yeah. bad for them at all. No, um, I have a bunch of friends who are Sabres fans, and all of them are saying, like, please don't let Jack Eichel get a cup. They all hate him. They yeah, all hate him. For no good Eichel. reason in my mind. For no good reason. No good reason because it's Buffalo's fault that he's gone. Exactly. So I've been there's saying, nobody to blame in this situation. Eichel re-upped his contract. He was ready to stay there. Who? Yeah. Why is he not there? Bad doctors. That's the, why. The Bad doctors. People the that Pugula. don't want to, you know. Sports. You know, and uh, well, it's a know. real thing, these doctors on teams, you know. Um, the Rangers just fired their head athletic, athletic trainer, Jim Ramsey. Yeah, let's, let's talk and, about all uh, that because, you know, there, there's a lot of people, because since we've been away, there's been a few firings, right? There's yeah. I'll do this up in Toronto. Your head coach was Addy, Gerard Gallant. Yep. And now they they, yep. they fired their trainer too, which I'm still you know okay whatever. I, don't I the trainer All thing that. is a mystery I'm because okay, they're okay, not so saying the to blame, huh? I mean, go, okay. they're not so, saying nothing about it though. They're right. just saying like they dismissed him. He's not saying anything, and he's been there. He's been there since they won the cup. Like he's been there a long time, and it's like why is this guy gone? Many people are very surprised at this. Because he was really loved by not just the Rangers team, but the Rangers community, like really got used to this guy. El Lundquist's um, uh, retirement of his number for the team, Jim Ramsey came out with a plaque. He had nobody knew this. He had saved all the pucks from Lundquist's shutouts. 
no and kidding. he put them together in a plaque for Heinrich. It was like, I think it was like 37 or something like that, 37 shutouts he had. Um, you know, which just is, before you go, I just want to sidebar real quick, and then we'll get right back to this. Yeah. As you mentioned this, I got to tell you something. That TNT broadcast is a million times superior to ESPN's. And I'll tell you, the big part of it is in the intermission shows, I'll tell you, between like one quiz, Gretzky's even got his game going on now because when he, when Wayne first started off on that panel, it was kind of, uh, you know. But yeah, he, he, he had a warm up entire, to it. That entire panel is awesome in between periods. And when I Biz isn't there. When Biz isn't there. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. But, or Subban. I don't really care for well, Subban that much. But that's. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm yeah, sorry. That's, yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you, listen to the Lundquist analysis on, on the intermissions are spot on. Oh, he's awesome, really, isn't he? It really he's been is. great on MSG this year. Yeah, that's why I'm so mad when he's on MSG and they black it out for the Sabers or something yeah. else. And I'm like, come on, man, it's a Hank night because he's not always there. Right. Um, but he's great, isn't he? Him and Steve Alicat, like they almost get into fights because Steve gets mad about like the good points Henrik makes ahead of him, and <laughs> like, and it'll be like. Just like Henrik said, like nobody wants to hear nobody wants to hear from you back up. Let's have the retired guy. Um let's have the retired guy, you know, talk. The guy who's gonna be in the Hall of Fame, not Steve Valiquette, whose career highlight is three shutouts against Philadelphia. Uh, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> but uh but yeah, uh, like said, sorry, it's I a it's a good that. broadcast. It's a good you know, they bet they've gotten it better. I should say that much. And they keep biz under control because yeah. uh, he's, uh, he's a he's, lunatic. He's a wild uh, guy. Yeah, I, hate, I hate him. I hate him. I just got to be upfront about it. I hate him. He killed our Comets chance of getting a Calder Cup, and I will never forgive him for that. I like that. <laughs> I think he's a great personality and great for the game. You know, oh, he was so dirty that Calder Cup final. He got away with so much. Yeah, it was, was ridiculous. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. But oh yeah, oh yeah. Week. That's definitely his motto. <laughs> definitely his motto. Hey, but it's my motto too. So <laughs> getting back to uh, getting back to these firings, um, the Ramsey. You know, there's there's controversy around it uh, online. Some people are saying it's something like HR related. Like he yeah. did not. He did something to get himself fired. Other people are saying it was the way he handled the Ryan Lindgren injury at the end of the season because the Rangers could have put Lindgren on the uh, Lindgren on the IR. They wouldn't have had to do all that monkeying around uh, getting Kane onto the team. Uh, but he kept saying, like, oh, he's just day-to-day. Oh, he'll be back, you know, and it turned right. out to be like a three-week injury. Um, some people are saying it's about the development of these kids. That you know that Lafreniere should be bigger and stronger by now, and you know that's on the athletic trainer. Like yeah. so, you know, there's a lot of uh, different thoughts about it. As far as Gallant goes, I'm sorry, he deserved to go. All these Ranger yeah. fans are like, "Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what a what a terrible call! Look at his record. He had 100 points in the two seasons he was there. It's like, yeah, and he made zero, zero, zero adjustments in the playoffs." Nothing. You're losing games to your rival. You got to do something to shake the team up. And he did nothing. I'll, I'll put this guy in this line. That's it. <laughs> like, you got to do a little more, coach. I'm sorry. You, you got to. Sometimes you got to whip the team. That's why I'm looking for a Mike Babcock replacement, a Joel Quinville replacement. I know. I know the Joel Quinville situation is, is sketchy about his past, and obviously that is a terrible situation. I don't, you know, forgive it, you know, whatever, but, like, he has That's been suspended. He lost his president's, you know, trophy-winning team last year. Is it a little soon for him to get be allowed back into the league? Possibly he's got a meeting with Batman next month about it. Um, I think if that meeting goes well for Quinville, he winds up the coach of the Rangers. That's probably what's going to happen. If not, it'll probably be Mike Babcock or Peter Laviolette. Yeah, I, I'm not actually surprised by Gallant getting fired. Just because, to me, I mean, as, and this is as a casual observer, it almost kind of seemed like he lost that team a little bit too. But the thing for me is with this Well, he definitely thing, did because some of and, them 
said it in their exit interview that they didn't. Right. They they kiboshed him. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing with me is, and I understand that he's going to get a little leeway because it was his first year as GM. But honestly, I don't think Chris Drury has gotten enough blame for this because, frankly, he's the one who put that team together, right? And I think we saw, and let's be honest, outside of Truba, what kind of, you know, bangers did they have on that team that you need in the playoffs? You know, that was all great and fine and good getting Patrick Kane, but... You don't have any – Patrick Kane's not going to go into the corners for you. Patrick Kane is certainly allergic Especially to – Especially with a bad hat. Yeah, exactly, right? So, I mean, yeah, that was all great for show. Oh, look what he did, you know, going and getting Vlad Tarasenko and all these, you know, the high-profile names. Fine and good. But when's the last time that you've seen a team loaded with superstars go all the way? You know, I found – I read a good article about this, Scott. Um and it was like talking about the Kane trade and how that really was the downfall for Drury this season because they're like, here's the thing. You know he's available. You know you can make it doable. You know it's the only place he wants to go. Like, if you're a GM who doesn't pull the trigger, you're a moron, right? It's Patrick Kane. But it was the cost at what that did to change the team from a team that's going to be your structure team with exactly. good lines and checking lines. And it took it to be like, we're going to push this skill down your throat, but that's not the team we've been all year. And now we have to learn to play a different way. And sometimes it works when we're playing the AHL Nashville predators. It looks beautiful. But when you have to play an NHL team, it can really go down fast. And Jesper Bratt took a nice shot at the range. I think it was Bratt or, or Bastion, one of them, um, said uh, when they were losing to Carolina, they're like, well, you know, the Rangers like to cheat, they, he said. You know, the Rangers like to cheat, so it's a little easier to defend. And if you look at those top lines, those guys, they do cheat. Like Zabinijad, Zabinijad cheats, Kreider cheats, Panarin cheats. <coughs> Excuse me. When I say cheat is, they all like to try to cheat behind the defense of the other team. They like yeah. to cherry pick a little bit, which means they're not playing defense. That's what that means. But you know whose fault that is? It's not Panarin. It's not Kreider. It's not Zabinijad. It's not Kane. It's Galantz. It's Galant's not stopping it and saying we got to do this now. But Galant's system encourages cheating. That's why Marcia was so good at it. Right. right because right. he was the biggest cheater in the league. Like, like so, and granted, he's got the speed to cheat. So does Kreider, usually. You know what I mean? Even so does Kane. Even so does Panarin. But what was the problem? Those guys all had breakaways and not one of them scored. Right. Not one of them scored on a breakaway in the playoffs. They all had them. Panarin had multiple breakaways, didn't score on any of them. Cryer had a breakaway, didn't score. P Kane had two breakaways, didn't score. So it's like, and, and you're getting beat by rookie goaltender. So, yeah, if it's not working, the coach has to make the adjustments. And the same goes for any other team that lost in the playoffs. Like, I guess the Leafs haven't fired their coach yet, but I guess he's on the hot seat. But, like, what what adjustments are you making, guy? Like, and I'm watching these games, you know, and they're like, oh, well, well, there's going to be TV timeout, so they might be able to keep, like, the top line out there a little longer. And then they don't. And it's like, why didn't he keep Matthews on the ice? You only need to keep him on the ice another 40 seconds, and it was going to be, a you know, a whistle and a TV timeout, you can put him back out there. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, and they didn't, they don't always make the right calls, you know? And unfortunately coaches get the blame, whether they, you think they deserve it or not. It's going to come down to the coach. As far as the team being Drury's team, I, I don't agree with that statement <laughs> because this is definitely still Gorton's team. You know, Drury's had very little hand. He obviously makes those well, decisions right. at the trade deadline. Yeah, I think they're alluding to. But right, really, the only mistake he made was Kane. 
And this is who they should have gotten. Barbashev. They should have gotten Barbashev from St. Louis with Tarasenko. That would have made a difference because let me tell you, that's the guy that's been probably the most influential trade decision at the deadline has been Ivan Barbashev. He has been outstanding for Vegas leading into the playoffs and in the playoffs. That guy's a wrecking ball. He scores. He's got good hands. Like, I can't say enough good things about I notice him every time he's on a shift. Like, you find, you, he, he makes an impact every time he's out there. And that's what you need to do in the playoffs. Whether you're going to score a goal, land a hit, make a good pass, whatever you're going to do, you got to do it every shift in the playoffs. And Ivan Barbashev, I would say, almost, you know, 100% perfection on that. He's oh, yeah. unnoticeable every time he's out there. Well, I agree. I agree. Ed, the other uh, big firing that we've had is uh, Kyle Dubas is gone in Toronto. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure as a Bruins fan, that just kind of warms your heart to see this, uh, just this seen Toronto mess that's, that's, mess that's just in Toronto. Just right seeing now Toronto get dismantled. Because, because of everything that's gone on with that. I mean, apparently the micromanaging that's gone on and that Shanahan blocked some of his trade ideas and wanted to sign certain guys and just, just an absolute mess up there. Um, what, what's your take on this whole situation? Is, is, is Sheldon Keefe, their coach, in trouble? Uh, yes, Sheldon Keefe is absolutely in trouble. Um, he was Dubas' guy. That next GM that comes in is going to want to bring in his guy. Um, that's, a, that's a tale as old as time with, with hockey, at least. Um, my thought is currently, is, is Shanahan the issue, too? Yeah, yeah. That's... Um, you, you, you hear you, you, you know. Dubas just lost a, a, a gut wrenching series. Dubas, you know, has an interview with the press. He, he, he says whatever he said. I don't remember exactly what he said. And you know, he's disheartened as one would be. Um, and Shanahan's like, well, I don't think he wants to be here. I just don't yeah. think he wants to. And I'm just like. I, that's not the feeling I got from it. I mean, I granted, I'm yeah. not in that room. I'm not, I'm not hearing the meetings. I'm not, you know, and I'm not even. I, I hate the Maple Leafs. Um, but it's almost like <laughs> Shanahan was looking for an excuse to get rid of him. Exactly. That's what it felt like to me. Shanahan was looking for an excuse to get rid of Kyle Dubas. And I, as much as you know, Mazzotti just said, you know, skill, a 100% skill team has zero chance in the playoffs. Um, and and that's what, to me, Toronto has been the past few years. This is probably the best Toronto team I've seen because they have brought in Ryan O'Reilly and they brought in some grittier players like Jake McCabe. Um, this has been Dubas's best year at the trade deadline, getting things that he needs instead of wants. Um, too little, too late, obviously. But now you're seeing players who have been with Dubas for a majority of their careers. Um, you know, for example, Austin Matthews. Um, is, is he done? Is he done in Toronto? Is he done with Toronto? Um, who would want to stay for that franchise knowing that just being a little upset that they lost potentially could just mean you're done? You know, just why, why would you want to play for that when you can go to? Uh, an organization that has a little bit more thankfulness to their members. Yeah, but you know what, though? That playoffs, I- I'm going to tell you something. Austin Matthews pretty much disappeared. Oh, yeah. So, he's, I, wait I, don't, a minute, wait I don't know about Masada. I'm confused. Too much. Wait a minute. I'm confused. Yeah. I thought Toronto won the cup. <laughs> they didn't win the cup? <laughs> no. Um, oh, oh. They, they won their personal. There was cup. a lot of celebrating. I thought they won the cup. Well, they they, 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 they had, had a parade first... down Young Street. Wait a minute, you're telling me they didn't win the cup? That was just for one playoff series. I guess the team the that you know. Let's be honest, Tampa didn't have a great year, and they had some some dinged up guys. But <laughs> so that wasn't the cup final. No, all right, not... all right. I guess, <laughs> I guess, I guess things work differently in Canadian hockey. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, no, they work differently <laughs> in Toronto hockey. <laughs> Montreal didn't celebrate until they won a Stanley Cup final game. Wait, but they wanted Florida. Wait a minute. The fans said they want Florida. 
Wow. Did they get him? I think they got him. I think, I think, <laughs> I think they got Florida. Yeah, they ever you know? too. yeah, yeah. Don't ever do that, fans. Don't be stupid. Okay, I know winning a series was new to you. Don't go. Don't go to your next team. You don't want to do that. Florida loved beating them. Did you hear those guys? They were talking about that. We want Florida. Those every one of those players heard that, knew that, and used it as fuel. So oh, you know what? Bacteria. If I was if I was the GM of Toronto, if I was Brendan Shanahan, you know I fire I fire the fans. Put an article in the paper. Say you people got to wake up. All right, it's a sport. It's not your life. We want your support, but don't give the other team ammo. Don't do it. <laughs> like <laughs> you didn't hear any. I mean, I wasn't going. Oh, I really want to play the Devils. No way. Like, like, I knew that was a bad matchup. I knew it 100%. Like, so, yeah, you don't, you don't do stuff like that. And, you know, uh, Toronto, it's, it's a mess. You're right, Ed. It's a mess. They got to do something. The only thing I can hope is Willie Nylander gets on a better team because I think he's the real superstar on that team. I'm sorry. That guy, he's really good. And he's totally overshadowed by Matthews and Marner and Tavares. But the star on that team is Willie Nylander. And, and that guy is, you know. He's the one that shows up. He's the one that. He shows up every shift. Every yeah. shift. And he never quits on a play. I've seen that guy single-handedly on the Marlies when he was in Utica. I've seen him single-handedly just dissect, dissect the whole other team and score. Just go walk through guys, score. You know, he's he's so fast. He's got such good hands. Uh, and he doesn't – he rarely misses the net. Rarely. Whereas, you know what? I'm sorry. For as good as Matthews is, I see him miss the net a bunch. Like, so, you know, that's a big thing in the playoffs. Hit the net. How many times do we see these guys go wide? And it's like – it's like I understand. Like, hit the defender before you go wide. Make that guy block the shot and get hurt before you go wide. Like, I don't get it. Unless you're going to do that, I think it was Vegas, had that wide shot that hit right behind the goal and came out the other side, right on the guy's blade, right into right. the back of the net. Unless well, you're going to do that play, hit the net. <laughs> like, yes. But the thing is, though, that's what a lot of teams are using as, like, set plays now, too. That's a good really, set play. Let me is. tell you, if that's you can pull that off, it's a great set too. play. But, yeah, that's that's for sure. Did you guys see uh, Kyle Dubas is actually interviewing with Pittsburgh? Yes. Um, Crosby, I guess, went and talked with him. Yeah. Uh, but I think Kyle Dubas, uh, as a GM, he's more ambitious than – any other <laughs> um, he has all these pipe dreams of like I'm gonna I'm gonna draft this player I'm gonna sign this player I'm gonna do everything I can to get this team 100 percent skill and then when one card doesn't match up it like all goes to hell like he has this perfect team built in his head and then but you need every one of those pieces and the moment one of those pieces isn't there he's it's done. It's it's just now a garbage team because they couldn't sign that second line center. The, spe- the very specific one too. <laughs> I mean, Pittsburgh. What's he gonna do in Pittsburgh? Because God, there's God, only one, a there's there. only one move to do in Pittsburgh. All right, before you could do anything, you gotta split up Malkin, Crosby, or Latang. And obviously, the the obvious choice is Malkin. See, <laughs> you know, me, you know. But the thing is, though, too. I mean. I, I know Hextall was the one that re-signed Malkin, but how much other influence was in on that, right? Oh, it was all Crosby. And, you know yeah, what it I mean? was all Crosby. So, and yeah. now they now, asked Crosby, they what do you want us to do? Crosby said we sign these guys. Yeah. Like they, they it, it was Crosby. Now, now that Malkin's re-signed the year, <laughs> what, seven, eight million a year or something like that for like the next six years? They're not moving him. No, they can't. <laughs> forget it. And they got they, they got no sweeteners in the system to throw in to get rid of them. Got nothing. Here's what oh. you do. You tell the Rangers to take Malkin, okay? Oh, geez, <laughs> right? You, you make a deal with the Rangers that includes Mike Sullivan. That's what you do. The Rangers would buy that because the Rangers have already 
inquired, and they're like, Mike's like, I'm under contract and I'm not going anywhere. But the Rangers, that's who Drury wants. If Drury had his pick of anybody, he would pick sure. Mike Sullivan. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It'd be like the old, uh, what was it, Michelle Bergeron trade. Remember that back in the 80s when they traded <laughs> for the, the Quebec Nordiques coach and sent a first round pick? Mm hmm. Uh, so, hey. so there we haven't be- seen it in a while. You know, so you're right. You're right. And by okay. the way, I can tell you, you know who'd be a good fit for, to fill that for Toronto role next? Gerard Gallant. Oh my! <laughs> he, <that laughs> Let me tell you, I bet guy. you anything. I bet you anything. He winds up in Toronto. That would be the perfect next landing spot for him. That poor guy wow. is so snake bitten and just cannot hold a job. He's like a 16 year old kid. <laughs> okay. This fire. one's on him. This one's on him. I'm sorry. I oh, I, mean, yes. I think you're the not, Vegas one was on him too. You're, like, you're not wrong. You're not. He loses the room. His whole "you guys go out and play." You're the players. I'm the player coach. You guys go do what you got to do. It only lasts so long, and that's why he's short leash coach. That's why because you can't just let the players do what they want forever. They start losing. You got to do something. Like, and when you right. haven't coached them all year, they're probably not that apt to want to listen to you when they're on the dumps. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I wouldn't. They'd be like, where the hell have you been all year, coach? You haven't told us anything to do all year except you're you're in our corner. Yeah. And now that, now that we're having a, a rough time of it, you want to be like, oh, you got to do this. Like, no. Like, they're, like, they're not going to. There's going to be guys that don't want to stand for it. And we've seen it on his teams over and over and over. Who gets rid of him? The players do. The players do. And that's and no GM wants to hear his players that he can't move, that he picked to be there, going like, you need to get a new coach. A GM's going to go get a new coach yep. because it's easier for him to replace one guy than replace the five that he brought onto the team. <laughs> you know? So that's what happens. Yeah. So let me ask you guys a question then. So we've already covered Golan getting fired. We've covered Dubas getting fired. Who else in the league, either coach or GM or both, could be in some trouble? Uh, I'll tell you who I think. I think that Ken Holland and Jay Woodcroft and Edmonton have got one more season to figure this out. <laughs> because I, I have got a feeling that if this happens man. to Edmonton again next season... Did you there see Connor's? Going to be heads rolling all did you see the Connor's place. after game interview, Scott? Yeah, he's disheveled. He's oh disheveled. man! But I, again, I, I, mean, but I tell you something though. I'll tell you guys. I only feel so sorry for him to a point because he was the one that had to have that huge contract. Had oh. to have his twelve, and, and you know what? Yes, he's the best player in the game, and I understand all of that. But in a salary cap world like we live in. You want to take that kind of a contract, knowing full well that guys like Leon Dreisaitl are going to want to get paid, and that Darnell Nurse is now making nine point two five million a year. Listen. You have to know in your head, you take that kind of contract, your team had better damn well develop some young players. You want to know if who you the don't, s- you're, you're you want to know who the smartest player is in the NHL, the smartest player, not necessarily the best, although he's very good. I got to say. Sidney Crosby. Yeah. You know yeah. why? He took less money. Uh, he understood did. this. He understood this. And what did it get Crosby? He's been to the final four times, and he's won three of them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Connor? Connor, if you're listening, I know you are. I'm sure you're an avid watcher. Uh, (laughs) uh, This this needs to be clear to these superstars. Like, yes, you want to make money. Yes, I get it. You know, taxes are high in Canada. If you take ten million in Canada, it's probably like making seven and a half in the states. Like, you know, in Florida, not in New York, obviously. But uh, you know. that's a that's a big deal, you know what I mean? And and you know, geez, geez, if Connor was making let's say nine and a half instead of twelve, this is another that's three go, three great. million goal dollars that you could give to a good goalie. Yep. <laughs> you know, yep. like to a 
to a better third line defenseman. Or like, that you, have you more, know, more space you have at the trade deadline <laughs> to improve your team where needed. Uh, like maybe pick up Ivan Barbashev. Bingo. What would he have done for Edmonton? You, ain't you know what I mean? Like, that's what you need. That's what you need in the playoffs. And, you know, I think when you said about the Rangers, I think they were counting on Barclay Goodrow a lot. And yes. I don't think he showed up very well. He showed up very late to, to, to in the last game. You know, he played decently or in game right. six, I think it was. But he that line, that, and I said it, you know, in the preview, I said, you know, that line's got to be good. That VC, uh, Ma and Goudreau line. And they weren't, they weren't good. VC wasn't good, you know. Mott was very good, but he's only one guy, right. and that line looked out of sync. And Goudreau didn't bring it together until it was too late. Those guys, those types of guys. I don't mean to always be going back to Rangers, but those types of guys are who win Stanley Cup. Oh, there's no doubt about playoff it. games. There's and no so, doubt. so instead of going out and getting Patrick Kane and Tara Sanker, you got to go for the guys like Barbashev. Like I, I'm really like, I can't think of another guy in the playoffs who's made as much of an impact yeah, well, exactly. from a trade from a trade deadline acquisition. Like he's been stellar, and you know Edmonton, man, oh, I it broke my heart saying Connor because it's like this kid is so good, it's ridiculous, yes, and but... he's he's like he's almost in tears, and it's like. And he and he's saying like I don't know like I don't know you know what to say I don't know how many more kicks at the can we're gonna get and it's like yo man you're eight years nine years into your NHL career how long do you think an NHL career is you're just one Jamie Ben uh, mis miss landing from getting out of the game you know what I mean like his you know. Awkward way to get up off off your guy's head with a stick, you know. But <laughs> uh, you oh, know, guys, I'll tell you, I'm looking at this right now. I'm looking at cap friendly, and mm -hmm. I'm looking at the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, so going into next season, they've got three more seasons of Connor McDavid. He is a free agent at the end of the 25-26 season. Leon Dreisaitl is a free agent at the end of the 24-25 season. Okay. I mean, What's dry Saddle's cap hit? Believe it or not, it's only eight point five million. Yeah, done. Which is, you know, that's Leon Drysaddle apparently gets it, right? He took the discount. Yeah. He took the discount. Okay, because Connor won it. <laughs> there aren't. Yeah, exactly. There aren't. I mean, if you look at Ryan Nugent Hopkins, he's only at five point one uh, two five, but he's signed for the next seven years. Um, Vander Kane's at 5.125. He's he's a free agent at the end of 25-26. But then you, you look into their defense, and you've got, like I said, that Darnell Nurse contract hurts, man. It hurts bad. Oh, it's it's 9. Yeah, it's 9.25 for like ever. <laughs> because it does. Cam Friendly goes out to the 28-29 season, and then there's an arrow after his contract, meaning it's, oh my God. it's like perpetuity, you know? Yeah, they're, they're praying one, escrow goes up. Pretty much. I mean, <laughs> even look at like Jack Campbell. They got him signed at five million per season through the 26 27 season. It's like, oh. And they, they're, you know what? Well, at least they got their backup goalie. At least they got their backup goalie situation taken care of. <laughs> I mean, Stuart Skinner was good for him in the regular season. He was all right. I mean, he's manageable. He's only 2.6 million, but he's through the 25 26 season. So, if they're going to make this work for, for Connor McDavid and for Leon Dreisettle, you know, to get the band all together and get them at least one cup, I'm telling you guys right now, it's got to be next season or something's got to give. They're going to have to trade. Yeah, There's because, no way. It's not going to happen. Not with this roster. They're going to have to make some trades. Yeah. Because there's, there's no they're doubt in about cap it. Hell. They're in cap hell. If they can uh, they, find a way to offload Darnell Nurse, I mean, that's a huge lift. Lift off their shoulders, but I don't see. Well, I know it there. doesn't mean anything in this league anymore. But Darnell Nurse has a no move clause. Obviously, McDavid does. So does Drysital. Zach Hyman's got one, and he's at five and a half million through twenty seven, twenty eight. They gave Hyman a no move. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Kane's got a no move, and so does Nugent Hopkins. I forgot Zach Hyman existed. Uh, pretty much. 
Nugent Hopkins one, too? The one that put him over the top, too. Remember that? Remember yeah, he was, the, he was that extra. Yeah, the year they Toronto, signed him. And then they went and got him. Like, oh, that's it. That's it. This yeah. is going to be the yeah. one. He yeah. did the stereotypical okay. great year before yep. the contract. Just parlayed it. No, okay. None of those are modified no moves? Uh, the, no. No, they are not. <laughs> The Ken only Holland one is Leon Dreisaitl has got a modified no trade clause with his no move, so he's got both. He really hedged his bets. Yeah, he it's yeah. Ken Holland hands out no movement clauses uh, like candy on Halloween. Terrible, even, terrible management. <laughs> even Jack Campbell's got a modified no trade clause. Oh my god! If even if. Hypothetically, yeah, yeah you know how you do that? Okay, this is Jack Campbell. Oh, you want my uh, 12 teams that I, I'll go to? Sure. I'll, I'll go to Pittsburgh. I'll go to uh, I'll go to New York. I'll go to Boston. <laughs> you know, just name all the teams that were in the playoffs last year. None of them wanted. <laughs> like, the, um, yeah, even if in, the, in a dystopian world, if – Edmonton goes out and wins a cup next year. You still have to fire Ken Holland for the amount of no movement clauses he's handed out. Yeah, this this team's in a lot of trouble for the next few seasons. They they really what is it? Wait, listen, there, there's no conspiracy. Batman does not have conspiracy against Canadian teams. Know. Okay, like, oh you know who I does? The Canadian team GMs. That's who has the conspiracy. It's like they all got in the room and said, how can we make worse moves? Who, who's our leader? Jim Benning? Okay, no, what are we going to do? Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> like, what are we going to do, Jim? Oh, hey. oh, you know what I think? Well, where's uh, Is Clarkson still in the league? What's going on? Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> somebody... Does somebody still own the Chris Pronger contract? Maybe we can get that. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Right, right. Right. We was kicking around the league somewhere. <laughs> Let's go sign him as a player. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That would be the best move any of them could do. Have you seen him as coach for Montreal? That guy can still play, man. Oh, <laughs> like, God, yeah. Same with uh, Rod Brindamore. Yeah, I was just going to say. I you if Rod Brindamore oh. suited up for Carolina instead of sat behind the bench, if, Carolina would Let me tell you, if him. I had a choice of who could replace Gallant, I think Brindamore would be at the top of my oh, list. Yeah. Because there's – there's, there's nothing more terrifying as a coach to me. That guy is a br- is a brick house, like yeah. for he's sure. Not even, and he's not even a professional athlete anymore, and he's no, than his own professional he, athletes. He's better than his kid who just won the college tournament. Man, I'm telling you, that guy and was built to last. What's that? Skyler, I think Skyler Brindamore signed with Edmonton. Did he? I believe he did. Well, let me tell you. Uh, if if Rod was the coach of the Rangers and he starts yelling at you to get your butt in gear, I would move it. <laughs> like, like, uh, hold up, the dad's here. <laughs> it's uh, it's really something else uh, to me that, and, and I felt bad for him. I mean, did you see his after after the series presser, Scott, with the? Yes, uh, I did. Well, it was very, you know, and I feel bad because, you know, and Messier, man, Messier is ruthless. <laughs> Messier is like, they said, you know, you know, Brenda Moore said, like, these games came all down to, you know, a bounce here or there, and over t- all the games went to overtime, you know, and all this stuff, and we just didn't get a win. Like, and it's, it's, it's a lot closer than people think, even though it was a sweep, you know. And they said mentioned that on, on ESPN, and <laughs> you know what Messier says? Yeah, but you still lost the games. <laughs> like, like <laughs> no sympathy at all. They even they even brought up the uh, 2014 cu- uh, Stanley Cup final. They even brought it up. They're like, you know, Hank. A lot of people say you guys lost that series in five games, but you know, I think it was Butchergrass was like that was one of the tightest. Stanley yeah, Cup was. Finals I ever watched. He's like, and that that could have gone any way. Any of those games could have flipped to the other side very easily. And uh, Hank's like, yeah. He's like, well, that's what that's what the playoffs is. And Mark's like, Mark Messi is like, 
but the numbers don't lie. You still got to win the games. He's like, that's what the game is. You put the puck in the net and you win. And you know what would have been like, great? You know what would have been awesome if one person had turned around and said, yeah, well, Bart, guess what? I was just it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same broadcast. Career. No, but I'm saying, it like, like responded yeah. on Twitter, said, hey, Mark, you know what? I wasn't surrounded by Hall of Fame ca- uh, talent for, oh, I don't know, three quarters of my career. So maybe well, you want to back off with the mouth, okay? You know. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Remember, oh, yeah. I always like to tell people, remember, Gretzky's got four cups. Messi has six. Yeah, but, <laughs> like, no, but again, I'll tell you this, though. Look at the talent Messi had around him for five and six compared to what Gretzky had around him for the rest of his career. Oh, yeah. D- no Take doubt. A look at that. I mean, I mean no. well, Gretzky had Bob Kadelsky on his wing. You know, Messi still had the core of that Edmonton team that was so awesome in the 80s. And then the 94 Gretzky. Rangers were basically a Hall of Fame. So, Gretzky, Gretzky made so many bad guys get good money because everybody who played on his line, you know, <laughs> Bernie Nichols, like, yeah, like exactly. I mean, Bernie Nichols, I'm sorry, he was not an all star ever. Well, it was, it was and, a choice. Either you can go to like a Messier team to be with all that talent, uh, win a cup, or you can go to Gretzky and make bank. I mean, it's, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, you know, make bank. After that, by the Rangers and do nothing. Uh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, but, yeah exactly. but uh, I wanted to say about that game that went to four overtimes. Score a goal! Like I'm sorry, I've been a fan at one of these games in the Call the Cup playoffs when the Comets went to four overtimes against yep. the Oklahoma City Barons. Okay, and let me tell you something: it was miserable. Miserable. The the arena ran out of everything to serve. Water, everything. Only thing they were still serving, beer. And I'm yeah. telling you, there were so many drunk drivers leaving that arena that night. I mean, ridiculous that they were still selling beer at the arena at one o'clock in the morning. Like and, and really. When you get to a game at 7 o'clock, I don't want to leave at 1.15 a.m. Like, I'm sorry. I love playoff hockey, but when you are in the building, it stinks. And let me tell you, when your team loses that game, um, it's deflating. It's oh, yeah. defl- completely deflating. It defla- deflating for everyone involved, from your fan base to the GM. It is completely deflating. And 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 once I saw that that game went to Florida, I'm like, they're done, they are done, because they were gonna. I knew they were gonna lose the next game, and once you're down 2-0 and you're going on the road, it's rough. It's rough for a Florida team that finishes. And let me tell you, that's one team that this one thing that this team has done since since they got into the playoffs. They finished the regular season by getting in. You know who didn't finish? The Pittsburgh Penguins. They couldn't finish off the purposely tanking Chicago Blackhawks. Okay? So, they did not deserve to be in the playoffs. Florida did. Florida's winning. Boston gave Florida a huge vote of confidence. You even hear it from Kachuk after the game the other night. He said, when we beat the greatest team in NHL history, (laughs) which Boston was this year, it's, it was a huge boost. And they were like, we beat them. We could beat anybody. And you know what? They have. And they may just about finish this off with a cup. It wouldn't surprise me. It, it really wouldn't, the way they're, they're playing. But I guess, like we talked earlier, I think a lot of it's going to depend on how much longer this Dallas-Vegas series goes. Yeah, well, I really truly let's just, this, let's just put it out there. Six or seven, that's bad for Florida. You got three teams remaining. Out of those three teams, who would you prefer to see win the cup? Florida. Oh, Florida. 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 I would I rather see Dallas. Dallas. Well, at least we can all agree we don't want to see Vegas. Yes. Well, that's okay. Let's say it's Florida Vegas. You both want you both you guys want Florida? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I get why Scott doesn't want Vegas. Why don't you want Vegas, Ed? Well, I'm going to Miami in August to play at the Panthers practice arena, so I'll get to send you guys a picture of me putting my balls in the cup. 
Yeah, well, that's never going to happen. You know, you know, you know, they don't leave it around anymore. The keeper of the cup is always with it. They don't. Ever since the Rangers, you know, like took it to the strip bar, you know, they don't just let anybody do it. Of course, nobody's letting Al Baker Bell near the cup ever again <laughs> for what he did last year to it. <laughs> was, it, was it, Al, it was Al Baker Bell, right? Crushed yeah. it right yeah. before the picture. Like, dude. Had to cut five minutes. <laughs> like you crushed the top of it. What are you doing? Like, oh, uh, that was brutal. That was gotta be one of the most brutal gaps in sports history. Like, hey, we're we're about to take the team picture. Oh, well, we gotta turn it around because Mora just crushed it on the ice. <laughs> like. <laughs> It's only silver. You know, silver's malleable. You know, we get engraved into this like it's just a hammer and a, and a stamp. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. <laughs> that was so bad. But, yeah, I, uh, I don't know who I want because I do not want Eric Stahl to win another cup. More than Mark, I really don't want Eric to win another cup. Uh, he was so bad when the Rangers picked him up at that trade deadline a few years ago. He should have been out of the league after that. Uh, and then on the other side, I think we all know about the Vegas fans. Do we really want them having a, the victory of a cop? <laughs> exactly. I think that's where you stand, right, Scott? Exactly where I stand. <laughs> exactly. But one thing's for sure, that this warm weather climate teams and these – Tax haven teams definitely seem to have an advantage. And, oh, I, think and, I, I don't. The I don't know when the league's gonna finally like break down and be like, we gotta, we gotta, you know, factor in the tax structure into these salary caps. But they need to do that. They oh, really yeah. need to do that oh, for the whole league. You want parity? Then give us parity and, and make it fair. Okay, you want to go to Florida? No problem. You're going to take more escrow out of them because the taxes are higher in New York, something. Or, right. or just give New York a higher cap based on the tax structure. Whatever way you're going to do it, right. I don't care. But right. they have to do something about that. I it's totally a, agree it's that. an obvious, obvious flaw in the league. That's why we're seeing Tampa win every year. Now Florida and Vegas, you know, Dallas. Why, these teams all have no taxes. Like So, yeah, sure. Like, all the talent's going to want to go there. And I don't blame the guys for wanting to keep their money, but the league has to ca compensate on the cap end. Things popped out there. I totally agree. I completely agree with that, and that's definitely a big-time discussion for another show because I think we could fill up with a half an hour with that, to be honest with you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We put down a list of guys that would have gone other places, a, like that's yeah. what we call a postseason review. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> but I am going to wrap this up as we always do with our Zamboni time machine because I just love this part. It's so much fun. I think you guys are going to like this one this week because it's really interesting. Anyways, the Zamboni time machine is brought to you by Zamboni.com, and the Zamboni name is used with permission. This week, the Zamboni time machine takes us back to February second, nineteen fifty-four, the day the Detroit Red Wings went to prison. Well, more accurately, that's the day the Red Wings played in a prison. In 1953, Red Wings general manager Jack Adams and team captain terrible Ted Lindsay were on a promotional tour of Mich Michigan's Upper Peninsula for Stroh's Brewery when, for whatever reason, they stopped by the state penitentiary, which was located in Marquette, Michigan. Go figure. Incarcerated in this particular prison were Ray Bernstein and Harry Cry or Kaywell, who were leaders of Detroit's infamous Purple Gang and also happened to be huge Red Wings fans. During the visit, the gangsters asked Adams about having the Wings play a game in the jail, an idea the warden liked as well. <laughs> Adams jokingly agreed, thinking there was no way a rink could be built in the prison. The GM was in for a surprise, though, as somehow, some way, they managed to build a regulation-sized outdoor hockey rink, complete with wooden boards inside the prison yard. Adams kept his word, and on the aforementioned date, the Detroit Red Wings, including Hall of Famers Ted Lindsay, Gordie Howe, and Terry Sawchuk, showed up at the Marquette State, Marquette State Prison, with a team to play the team of prisoners. As you can imagine, it wasn't much of a game. It was 18 to nothing at the end of the first period. So for the second period, the teams made up of a mixture of the Red Wings and the prisoners played each other. For the third period, it was the Red Wings only playing an intra-squad scrimmage. 
After the game, Red Wings players were each given a wallet, a leather wallet with the players' names and Red Wings logos sewn in. All handmade by the prisoners. And that, my friend, is this week's Zamboni time machine. So there was a longest yard hockey game? There was. There was. It was Nobody got shivved? No, no. Believe it or not, I mean, they, uh, they, they all just, they were so thrilled. They had the I mean, I'm players. surprised Gordy Howe didn't shiv somebody, you know? Yeah, yeah Gordy Howe probably belonged in there. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, though, I mean, it's, boy, that's something you would ne- never see nowadays. No. no. You that? <laughs> Nowadays, that's a that'd be a PR disaster. <laughs> yeah, I can. Could just, you I imagine? Can, I can picture Connor McDavid going into a prison to play hockey, right? Yeah, they'd, they'd drop soap in front of him and tell him to pick it up. Oh, although, God, although they wouldn't agree to it nowadays because they know they could put a hockey rink anywhere now. <laughs> like that is, that'll be the next stadium game. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they should do? The ne- I was just thinking this. The next one would be cool. Uh, I don't think they've done this yet. I think they did it for basketball, where they did it on an aircraft carrier. Yeah. That yeah. would be really um, sweet. They did it in the NBA. They, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Syracuse ended up playing on that court, too, maybe. Um, that, that one that's right in, in New York City, right? It's a, a museum, I believe, the Intrepid. Intrepid, yeah, 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 that'd be really cool. It wasn't like an active aircraft carrier, which would have been no. Cool if they yeah. did it in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> that'd be awesome. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it'd be good to park it somewhere where like people can come and see it. <laughs> but I think that would be pretty neat if they did did one on the deck of an aircraft carrier. That'd be pretty pretty yeah. crazy to see. The closest I mean, Alcatraz is, is still is available. They can relive this in Alcatraz. I'm not sure what the uh, dimensions of an aircraft carrier are. I'm sure the length would be fine. I don't know what the width is. The width oh, would I'm be sure the, the width is yeah. even more fine. Yeah, you got to remember you're fitting airplanes on that. You're fitting right four or five fighter jets at once. The the width yeah. would be fine. The the issue would be the 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 wave. If even if it's stationary, just a little bit of that. <laughs> Yeah, they make it interesting, wouldn't they it? They make it so much more fun. Think about like you take a shot, right? And it's got a certain trajectory, but then it's you know you're bouncing a little bit, so the goalies would have to really like be on point. Like I think it'd be a lot of fun. It'd be the you first know? game where everyone wears cages. They did announce yeah. a couple stadium series games next year for the Devils uh, and the Islanders, I believe. Yes, Isn't it kind of like what it was the before? Rangers and the Islanders they were talking about? Rangers, Rangers Devils, Islanders, and yeah. Devils Flyers. They're yeah, both going to yeah. be at MetLife. Yeah. Um, so, wow, group trip? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll wear my Giants jersey since I have no skin in this game. In February in Jersey, I don't know. <laughs> hey, we could go to the we could go to the best unfinished mall in the world. Yeah, uh, but you know what though? They had a WrestleMania at MetLife in March. So it was one. Didn't... I went to I went to that WrestleMania. It was one. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah well, there you go. Well, See? well, that's the that's the big thing about it is you you pack fifty thousand, sixty thousand people in the stadium. It kind of self heats itself. Right. <laughs> right. It's a lot. Right. It's a lot easier in March than February. Um, yeah, it's, it's early February, February too. Early February. Yeah. It was blizzard it's February. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> late March, early April for. For WrestleMania, so it's a big, it's a world of difference, but because it goes from like parka and toque weather to to sweatshirt and maybe some mittens. Yeah, well, right. they had that one Super Bowl in that life, and it was like what fifty two yeah. degrees outside. Right. It wasn't that bad. That was a gift from God. That was, yeah. you know, and I and I think too, guys, that we forget up here in upstate New York that it's it's a bit colder up here than it is down in the tri state area, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. cut that yeah. you cut that out. It is frozen down there. I have been down there in January and February, and it is wind tunnel galore. That's all it is. It's just wind. You might as well have a frozen tornado. It is garbage. I'll never go down there that time of year again. I hate it. I hate New York City. I hate the tri-state area. New Jersey's a dump. Let's just send it away. Well, it only took us an hour and 24 minutes when we finally did get him fired up and go over the edge. Perfect. <laughs> and on that <laughs> note, I think we're going to have to end this because how, how else do you end the show besides having Ed go off about the Tri-State area? Um, <laughs> donate, please. Team Chile, we need your help. Um, 
I'm thinking, I'm looking at doing promos for it. You donate, donate a certain amount, you get something. You donate an, another amount, you get something. Um, anybody? How much hit, do I you need know, to donate to get you kicked off the team? Uh, well, since it's <laughs> me running at zero, <laughs> it's, it's 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 like a million dollars. Well, after, after your rant, I think we can pretty much cancel out the tri-state area for getting anything. <laughs> yeah. But we'll have to work for um, else. They don't. They don't listen. That's the. That's listen. the best part about it. They're not going to listen. By the way, they don't, they the have state no of New Jersey is a very nice state. <laughs> like, like maybe, maybe not Northern Hoboken or something, but it's, Cape May is a lovely more. area. <laughs> I'll give yeah. you. I'll give you. Uh, I'll give you like the Pine Barrens. It's beautiful in the Pine Barrens. I've driven through the Pine Barrens. It's beautiful there. Okay. It's, Guess it's where beautiful. I'll... Anything that was on Sopranos episode is okay. Yeah. yeah. Anything that wasn't on Sopranos, you're good. Anything that, any place that doesn't have casinos, you're fine. Oh. Atlantic City, dump. Hoboken and Hampton <coughs> and Trenton, garbage. See, there you go. And there is your geography lesson of the New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Tri-State area. To end <laughs> Connecticut's awesome. glorious. I will not take uh, any Connecticut slander. It's the most beautiful state out there. All oh. right. Well, you've, you've saved yourself for the state of Connecticut anyways. All right. <laughs> That's all we've got for this week. I want to thank everybody for listening and watching and supporting the show. We really do support Ed's cause for Team Chile because it's a really great cause. And always check out the SportsHistoryNetwork.com for all your sports history needs because it's a really cool website. All right, Fred Stefaniak. I'm I'm in Chris Mazzotti. I'm Scott Kimball. Boy, I hammered that one, didn't I? We will see you next week on Party's Illegal Stick.